bouncing back and forth between the champions and challengers division. Second year pro team Upton 187 crew has finished middle of the pack with 11th, 12th, and 10th place finishes so far this season. The core of the team is strong, but there just hasn't been enough consistency from the roster this season to put them in the top half of the league. They haven't been able to get their starting five players on the save page long enough to dominate. Max Trailer got a slow start, but is highly talented. Dan Zaleski and Eddie Painter are neck and neck as the two highest ranked players on the team. And we're still waiting to see the game Nick Laval brought last season, where he looked amazing and was in the running for Rookie of the Year. But 187's great attitude and aggressive mindset should help them in their quest to get back to the Champions Division for World Cup. Few teams in the PSP have a legacy as deep as Chicago Aftershock, but the historic team has struggled to regain their former glory and hang with the top teams. They've had a few roster changes, but they still have a group of young talent who are aggressive and hungry to get better. Karl Markowski, who was an awesome talent years ago and might just be the fastest man who has ever played pro paintball, has come back to play with Aftershock. Their captain, AJ Lawhead, is the heart and soul of the team, and they've been getting a ton of production from Brian McKenna and Rob Velez. With their wild style, Shock is very entertaining to watch, and they do have a chance to move up the ranks as long as they stay focused on taking advantage of the opportunities that they create on the field. So welcome back here. We are in the last two games of the 2013 PSP West Coast Open. I'm Matty Marshall alongside Todd Martinez and Chris Lasoya, and we are about to watch the Challengers Division final game between Upton 187 Crew, Chicago Aftershock. These two teams fought bloody matches in order to get here, but they are here now. Both these teams will be playing in the Champions Division for World Cup, but who's going to win this tournament? We're going to find out here. We're going to throw 20 minutes on the clock. What do you guys think about this matchup? You know, Mikey Bruno has fought many tough battles, went a whole <laughs> season with only winning one game last year, mm -hmm. I believe. And, you know, I really feel for Mikey Bruno and the hard work that he's put in, and I'm glad that he's gotten some extra help, uh, as in, like, Carl Markowski to come in here and fill some of the voids that they needed. But 187, they're a team that consistently tries to make sure that they are playing their game. I like both of these teams, but I would kind of like to see Aftershock come out here and get back uh, into the cha uh, Champions Division with a win. On the break right now, though, getting shot out. On your left, Aftershock getting taken out, number 10 right there. But Chris, both teams dropping a body, but Chicago Aftershock better field position off the break. Oh, but I think, looked like uh, Carl Markowski getting shot out of his bulk. He made that 40-yard line Dorito, but got uh, shot out of there. But AJ Lawhead, one of the best players on Aftershock, a leader on that team, up in the center, shutting down the snake side of the field for Upton 187 crew, though Upton 187 crew, they have Nick Ball, Trailer, Darula, and Zaleski left on the field, a one-body advantage. And nice shot by Max Trailer on Carl Markowski as he dove into that Dorito, too. But Aftershock still pressing. Caleb Abel gets into the 50 snake to get up and help A.J. Lawhead, who is in the, uh, the, the, the middle oh, no. leader on the A. Oh, minor penalty you just saw on your screen from Caleb Abel, who was in the 50-yard line, which takes Lawhead out of the game, too. Minor penalties, yellow flag thrown in the air by the referee. It's a one-minute penalty, and as long as you get in that box and you lose the point, it's going to come off the board, which is exactly what is going to happen as Nick Laval, the captain of 187, is going to hang that flag up. So the first strike goes to Upton 187 crew. They're going to go up 1-0 to zero against Chicago Aftershock there. Though Aftershock had good field position, man, they've got to stay out of the box to have a chance here against an Upton 187 crew. Again, bounce back and forth between the Champs and Challengers division. And they have an, a lot of talent on team. Max Trailer, the new pickup, Matthew Derula, he's a baller. Nick Roberts is good. Dan Zaleski and Nick Laval, as we saw last year, they definitely can play at this level. So we just started this matchup. The first strike goes to 187 crew. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. I am now here with DC Devastation, who got first place in D2 Race to Five. Congratulations. How do you feel? We're ecstatic. I mean, we just we just won another event. That's that's what we come here to do. So win. All right. Well, who do you want to thank? Uh, I want to thank uh, GI Sports always, Planet Eclipse, uh, Exalt, GB20 Designs, uh, and then Skyline Paintball, Chris Sue, and then uh, Raza and 
Steve Rabikoff from uh, GI. He just does so much for us. We couldn't do anything without all, the, all those people. All right, well, congratulations, guys. We'll see you at World Cup. Heading back into this matchup, yes, congratulations to DC. Devastation. Chicago Aftershock losing that first point against 187 Crew. Todd, they got to stop making these small mistakes. The difference between Chicago Aftershock and the top teams in the league, it's not a talent, it, it's not intention, it's not hard. It's little mistakes they continue to make. Yes, and here comes 187 on the breakout, trying to go all the way to the snake on the break, but they get chopped up. Bold move right there. Losing that body early. Aftershock able to keep all five bodies alive, spread across all the back bunkers, except for the snake corner, and then jumping across from the snake temple into the snake, and then straight to the 50. Caleb Abel again, After not getting that letting penalty. that penalty affect yeah. him, comes straight to the 50, and is gonna cross, and gonna try and make up for the penalty he just got, cost his team a point. But nope, he is gonna get shot. Little trying. mistakes, You're Todd. You, right, you guys both said it yourself, little mistakes, Aftershock. Yeah. They, they, did, they did get a shot on Josh Pike. It's four on four right now. But Caleb Abel past the 50 yard line. Hey man, just hide. You got 18 minutes left. You're in an awesome spot. You're down a body. You're in, it, just suck guns up. Let the team, let your team move up and take position. You don't need to initiate gunfights. It, it's actually better to take a beat. I talked to Justin Rabikoff one time. It's now a big move made by McKenna for Aftershock. And Justin Rabikoff's one of the best snake players in the world because you know what? He's like, every time I get in the snake, I count to five. One, two, three, literally counts to five before he even thinks about engaging because that gives the team time to set the point. So now 187 crew down two. There's Aftershock on your screen right there. Lawhead, Markowski. I, I, look, look for Markowski to definitely get to the 50 really, really soon. That guy is blinding speed. Nobody's really looking at him right now. You can tell by his body language he wants to make that move. 187's got a body in Dorito 2 right now, though. Farthest player up, Carl Markowski in Dorito 1. There, He's yeah. going to come up you and jump see. into Dorito 2 as well. Yeah, top hand portion of your screen there makes that next bump. Oh, and another body drops for 187 crew. It's Greg Lazat. He's going to take the walk. Laval and Trailer left alive to try to stave off the attack. Chicago aftershock, and here comes McKenna down the snake side of the field. Ooh, McKenna almost got picked oh, up right exactly there by Max did. Trailer. And look at the okay blinding speed across the field. <laughs> what did we say, Maddie? You called that the best, dude. Markowski is hot such Carl. a hot Carl. Hot Carl. Microwave. Yeah, we heat him a, up. There's a reason why when he came into the league years ago as a 20-year-old boot rookie with just 4140 speed. I mean, I don't know if it's 41, but I, I literally. I, <laughs> I'm not saying 41. I've never but. seen anyone as fast as Carl. I played with a lot of fast <laughs> guys over the years, but Carl Markowski getting a three-pack there in that point. Carl Markowski could be a force in professional paintball again if that lives inside of him. He wants to do it. He, I, I real, rarely do you see the natural ability that that guy has. So can Chicago Aftershock win this game against 187 Crew? It's all tied up. We'll be right back after this. Sixteen twenty-four to go. Chicago aftershock taking on Upton 187 crew. Both of these teams played phenomenal to get to this Challengers Division final. Both these teams will be playing in the Champions Division at World Cup. Who's game or who's gonna win this one? Well, that remains to be seen. That's why we shoot the paintballs at each other. And right now taking the field for Upton 187 crew, Laval, Lazat, Painter, Roberts, and Zaleski. And on Chicago Aftershock starting. Velez, McKenna, Lawhead, Abel, and Simmons, two evenly matched teams about to throw down right now. It's all tied up. And 
here comes up to 187 on the attack, up to that center can, shooting towards the snake side on the break. Looks like 187, they're gonna lose Nick Roberts on the break, trying to come out to the snake side corner. Both Caleb these. Abel gets shot on the break. He may have injured himself. He left his gun on the field. Oh man, Caleb Abel is walking off without his gun. Well, I, we actually heard that. We heard the blow up in the, in the, on the field. Now, I mean, this it's really hot out here right now. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a player walk off the field. I don't know. What you know, is you know, I, we, we've seen. It might be a safety thing. I mean, if your gun, if your gun has a problem, malfunction, leave it on the field. Don't mess with it. Let the let the text do with it. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, There's Painter so, on your screen right there, up in the A for 187. Number 37 right there in the middle of your screen. Eddie Painter. Oh, and AJ Lawhead comes into the 302 for Aftershock, but gets shot right in the dome. 187, 187 crew. starts attacking down the Dorito side. Yeah, Todd looking real good over there on the Dorito side, like you were saying. And that is going to do it for Chicago Aftershock as they lose a bunch of bodies real fast. Greg Lazat and Dan Zaleski over there. Yeah, that was Greg Lazat who came down that Dorito side, number eight. For Upton 187. Got himself a three pack at least. You Did. know, when we talk about this all weekend, Maddie and Todd. I mean, good moves are rewarded by great ventures. I mean, three yes. packs, four packs, five packs. You know, but if, if, a, if a gun goes down like that, we actually heard that uh, from up here, actually. I heard the, the, the noise. Sometimes these hoses or something that has, you know, malfunction, a burst disc, it, yeah, anything. It, but the best thing to do is to set it down and walk away. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if you have a burst disc blow up, you don't want to be near that gun with all, the, you know, 4,500 pounds of pressure coming out. Now, exactly, the burst discs, they exist to prevent from catastrophic failure. So it's not that much of a uh, precarious situation. Well, I'm glad that it was just a burst disc or something like that because sometimes you see players ditch their guns when they dive into a bunker wrong and hurt themselves. So glad Abel's okay. You know, and it was just a gun malfunction. Ditch that and come back. So. I was kind of scared for a second. Hey, I thought maybe hey, he dislocated his shoulder like yeah, Brad McCurley. He yeah, because like, like, yeah, I don't, want, wonder, but I don't like want to dislocate my shoulder. If I play like Brad McCurley when I dislocate my shoulder. <laughs> right. I Seriously. Mean, Brad McCurley got a Purple Heart Award, man. That guy was just uh, so amazing for Infamous. And, you know, uh, through battling through pain, like I, I rare, like you rarely see. So now the score is 2-1 to one in favor of Upton 187 Crew. They look awesome in that last point. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, and thank you for accessing awesome paintball gear from RazaLife.com. Yeah, you know, Raza believes in creating something for absolutely everyone. You can customize any Raza jersey or have your own custom jersey designed just for you. Wow, Raza sure makes it easy to represent who you are and where you're from with custom jerseys, pants, and much more. You really can get in on the action and feast on all Raza has to offer by calling right away. So the story of the year right now is how Raza can really bring out the style your team is looking for. Thanks for checking out RazaLife.com. Come right back after watching this tournament. So two to one is the score, 14-38 to go. Both teams at full strength right now, and a lot of game to play here. Yeah, and uh, you know, up to 187 crew with this two to one lead, uh, still needs to keep attacking. Aftershock, same thing. That's how these teams are successful. That's what we like to watch out of them. Aftershock always making those little small mistakes mm -hmm. uh, when they lose games. Up to 187. They lose games when they don't play like a team. So both these teams can keep attacking, being aggressive. But this should be an awesome finals match. As Nick Laval, number 13 for 187, gets shot on the break, heading after the Dorito side. Todd bodes well for 187's chances when they got Greg Lazat out there getting three packs. Ooh, and up the middle aftershock right away, heading to that 50 Dorito right on the side of the A. Gonna try and lock off that side of the field, looking for kills right now. Yeah, they eight. have gotten a little greedy, look like some Oh, the ball might have broken off the bunker. Whoa. As they what? lose number 10, Brian McKenna. One player coming off for 187 crew early from a kill from AJ Lawhead. It's Nick Laval, arguably the best player on 187 crew. And they also lose Joshua Pike, also shot by AJ Lawhead. But Aftershock loses McKenna too, so seesaw battle back and forth here. You know, I, right now, I, I like the aggressiveness right now by Aftershock. Drop in the face. Um, 187 is on their heels right now, trying to make their moves. But if you're in those front spots being aggressive, it's hard to fill out. I'm surprised he actually made this spot right now, Matt. Yeah, well, the thing is, is Shock's taking a lot of ground. Shock is definitely taking more ground than 187. But now, but 187, man, they are a great shot. Oh, it looks like. Eddie Painter. Mm, Eddie Painter. 
who's that. really been a standout back player for Update 187 crew. He takes the walk early. So now, looks like Chicago Aftershock, four to two body advantage here. Ooh, there goes Carl Markowski, bumped into the 50 Dorito, Dorito but Just came out and uh, may have got a little greedy. I think Zaleski may have caught him from the snake corner over here. But Max Trailer still over there in that Dorito tower. He's been peeling uh, shots off. And AJ Lawhead getting himself a three pack right now. AJ Lawhead, number 27. He's the one that's in that Dorito up there in the 50 on the side of the A. Two on two, guys. It's two on two right now. And oh, it's only Con two to one. Con Win also shot. So it's Max Trailer and Dan Zaleski versus Rob Velez and AJ Lawhead. 12 minutes, 34 seconds to go. Tons of time left here in this Champions, or sorry, Challengers Division final match. And yeah. Aftershock and 187 crew. There's Both of them, they look solid though, right, Todd? Yeah, that's Lawhead on your screen right there in that Dorito, number 27. The leader of this Aftershock team, and he is able to keep his body alive as Trailer tried to come run him down and then trades out with Dan Zaleski. So that is gonna leave Rob Velez left alive. Number two, Chicago Aftershock to come in. So Lawhead on that trade out Oof. is gonna get a four pack for Chicago Aftershock. And Rob Velez, as long as he's clean, gonna hey, even this game up at two to two. There's a, that's exactly why AJ Lawhead is arguably the most important player on Chicago Aftershock squad. He's been around for a long time, played for some big teams, and really one of those foundations that you can build upon. And when you get out, go out there, put a four pack up, shoot four guys, well, the rest of your team's like, all right, well, it's tied it up. Let's, let's get out there and let's do it for AJ, because AJ's carrying the team in that last point. We'll be right back after this. What's up, Ryan Greenspan here. Hey, this is Kyle Spica. Go to ansgear.com Dynasty for 10% off all exclusive Dynasty merchandise. PaintballDojo.com. Support your favorite pro team. Get your name printed on pro team gear. PaintballDojo.com. Lifestyle gear for players. Full color and completely custom options. Build a custom design straight from our website. Gear available for both men and women. PaintballDojo.com. Lifestyle gear for players. In a very close match here, Chicago Aftershock and Upton 187 crew are tied at two apiece with 11 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Taking the field for Upton 187 crew, Laval, Lazat, Zaleski, Darula, and Roberts. Matthew Darula, the rookie for that team, getting a lot of playing time. Yeah, and on the breakout right now, up to 187, coming hard down the snake side, doubling up that mini Dorito. Never seen that yet. On your breakout but, left, Aftershock in the left, 187 in the right, but doubling up that, that little Dorito, Todd. That's yeah. hard enough to get you as it is. Yeah. Oh, and as you see, losing one in the break right there. I mean, oh, and also Aftershock losing one as well, going down the snake, so four on four. Nick Roberts for 187. Ooh, and trying to fill out to the snake corner. Tough move, but he makes it in there. There's Davy Simmons on your screen all the way to snake three. For Aftershock. Oh, and he comes out a little too wide and he gets shot as 187 also jumps into the snake. That's Darula. Darula filled out to that snake corner, but he gets shot down the wire. Dan Zaleski goes from snake one to snake three. Looking for kills across the field. Bodies dropping off all over the place. Three bodies alive for both teams from better field position because Dan Zaleski, for 187, because Dan Zaleski is in the snake. Oh, but he might have caught one referee in there checking him out. And then now here comes, here comes Aftershock, number 13, <laughs> Clifford Ginter. Woo, coming hey, in from the back corner bunker. Good heads up play right there. I mean, coming down, noticing he's getting checked, and then taking full advantage of the situation. 
Yeah, that was that was a heads up play by Ginter. And, oh. But can Shock take advantage of it? No, Carl Markowski goes to finish off that player from 187, and he gets chopped up. I think it's uh, uh, Nick Laval over there. No, it's Greg Lazat. Greg Lazat over there in the Dorito, 40 yard line Dorito. I think so, it might be one on one right now. Trying to sort out the bodies. I'm, I'm yeah, trying to sort that, that, that is number 13. That's I'm trying Nick to sort the bodies out. Yeah, just nastiness going up back and forth between these two teams here. We couldn't have an easier, a more evenly matched game going on. Well, these are the two best players from their respective teams. Nick Laval and AJ Lawhead right now going one on one. And Nick Laval is going to get the best of that matchup right there as he shoots AJ Lawhead, who just came off a four pack. Nick Laval stepping up for his team right there and going to give them the lead as soon as this flag gets hung. See, this is what it's all about. Sunday, four o'clock in the afternoon. Best teams in the world. You big know, players. I, I, big I love, games, I love big Nick days. Laval. I love how he plays. We haven't seen necessarily uh, his him fill into his level of talent so far this season, but it exists. There's a beast that exists inside that kid. <laughs> I remember one of the best interviews I've ever heard, read in my entire life was Nick Laval. Well, we'll get to that here after we check out this snake replay. So there's Ginter, who launches from the back corner bunker. Runs all the way down. Wow, that is a gigantic move from Ginter. What I mean, a he, smart, what a smart play. I though. mean, wow, talking about running the whole coast to coast highway there. Not not down the highway, the highway's the inside part of the snake. But wow, that was an awesome move by Ginter. No one the player after shock's getting checked out by the referee. And we'll be right back after this. Three to two, up to one eight seven crew. So here we go, it's very close game. Chicago Aftershock losing by, or well, down by one right now, upped in 187 crew. But like I was saying, man, Nick Laval, there's a beast that lives inside that kid. Read an interview from him when he was talking about, you know, what was his favorite moment of his rookie year? And instead of saying, oh, we won this game, we won that game. No, it wasn't winning anything. It was, he got bunkered by, it was their plant infamous and he got slaughtered down in a bunker move where they put it on him extra. And he was like, why would somebody want to do that to me? You know, like, why would somebody, and he realized that, well, because they were playing Infamous real solid, and they were scaring him. He realized that, you know, we had, I had scared a beast, and that I realized that made me want to become a beast, too. You know, like, I, I wow. Love that, that, I, I love that, that. When I read that, it sent chills up my spine, because that's somebody that whose head is exactly where it needs to be to be a, a top player in this game. Oh, Eddie Painter in the middle right there. Goes up, gets a kill, diving into the snake, shoots Caleb Abel, but then gets shot himself. So he, Eddie Painter's gonna come walking off the field. Looks like Josh Pike coming off that snake side as well for Upton 187. Aftershock still with four bodies alive. Lawhead, McKenna, Simmons, and Velez. Simmons over here on the snake side. That's the Dorito one for Upton 187 crew. Oh, and Ooh. he is gonna get called out. Oh. <laughs> wow, that was Lazat. Right there, getting shot out of that Dorito. So and quickly advancing up the Dorito side now, Aftershock. So Todd, right now, man, Aftershock is doing a better job of gunfighting at this point. Shooting guys out of spots. Max Trailer getting shot out of that Dorito tower as well. And Aftershock coming on the feeding frenzy, four on one. Dan Zaleski sitting in snake one for Upton 187 crew. And not gonna be able to fight all the guns of Chicago Aftershock by himself. So Chicago Aftershock getting some kills early and then coming aggressive down the Dorito side. I love this. I love paintball right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. I do, I'm man. I'm excited about this game. These are two hungry teams. You know, you got Upton 187 crew, came into the league last year, brand new squad, and uh, just destroyed people in divisional ranks, trying to play pro, looking solid. And then Chicago Aftershock trying to revive a legendary franchise, one of the best ones ever. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly on the sideline. She has Eddie Painter. Hey guys, I am down in 187's pit with Eddie Painter. Eddie, 
This is the best we've seen Aftershock perform in a long time. What's it going to take for you guys to secure that win? We're going to have to start getting some more Gs off the break, and then we're going to have to capitalize on where those lanes drop. I mean, it comes down to getting ahead and, and staying ahead and, and really sitting on them. There's only seven minutes left, eight minutes left in the match. Get the lead and hold on to it. All right, what's the energy like in the pit right now? We're calm. We're real calm. Everybody knows their job. Nobody's panicked. It's a close game, but we've been there before. All right, we'll see if they can get those kills off the break. It's tied now. It's anyone's game. Being a snake player, diving around a lot, you're crawling a lot, and the geo can outstand my beating it up down the snake. I can shoot straighter with that gun than I've ever shot in my life. The bunkers are getting smaller and smaller. You really need to play tighter and tighter. Having a small gun like a geo 3 has helped me evolve my game and be able to play tight spots. My name is Billy Bernaccia. I play for San Antonio X Factor. My gun is a geo 3 I'd like to spend a, uh, send a special shout out to PB Nation. They're the match sponsor for this game. They have ton, one of the biggest buy sell trade sections in the world. Anything you need, you can go to pbnation.com, find in that section. Also, you know, join the conversation. Lots of chatter going on there about anything, any type of paintball, big games, tournaments, walk on. You can go there and talk about literature if you want, to be honest. There's uh, pbnation.com, join the conversation. Here we go. Pretty sure you can go on PB Nation and talk about synchronized swimming. If, if you would like to. There's so there's many different yeah. things. There's yeah. a form for everything middle. on PB Nation. Yeah. Up the middle, aftershock all the way. Actually, just diving, just safe. Five on. Oh my, here, here comes flag. That's oh, a red flag no, in the air. Oh, not. Oh, so. Major penalty. One on eight number seven four. is now going to, for number the eight. first time this game, really, we've seen a penalty come into, into play here and really make a difference. Greg Lazat drawing a major penalty. And here comes Aftershock down the snake, Matt. Davy Simmons. Yeah, Davy Simmons in good field position. Body starting to drop as Zaleski comes off. And Greg Lazat now 187. They just they need to cross it up, try to take as much time off that penalty as possible. Not really in great field position. And here comes Chicago Aftershock about to take this lead. With this field, a major penalty will cost you a tournament. Without question, we've seen it time and time again, Matty. Yeah, the penalties are always the penalties are there. They're always going to be a factor, but with this particular layout, we have definitely seen some teams pay the toll when they get penalties. You know, I don't want to knock Dimitri Ninos too much because he did come back from a bad day with when he had three major penalties, and he was able to have a, a great showing after that, and and San Antonio X Factor was able to preserve their Champions League spot, but. When he got penalties, there was 14 points scored. Uh, the uh, the to whole, the total, whole, the total of 14 total, points. Total, and out eight, of those 14? Eight of them were scored while he was eight. in the box. So that's just a little example of why you can't get too many major penalties. Or in Major penalties, just stay away from the reds. Miners come, it's going to happen, but stay away from those reds. I know it's tough out there. So with under seven minutes to play, Chicago Aftershock now up one here on Upton 187 crew. You know, and I, actually, I, kept, I think I called in the beginning... Uh, Chicago Aftershock by, what, two or three? Regar I, regardless, but I mean... I think by, you said Shock pen. by three. Well, whatever it is, I called it. <laughs> so. Well, it's not over yet, man. <laughs> no, seven, it's not. seven minutes to go here, and Upton 187 crew absolutely could get back in this match. Let's give a pause here to thank the sponsors for the PSP here. Platinum sponsors of the PSP, the people to make it happen. Empire Paintball, Die Precision, GI Sports, Planet Eclipse, DLX, and the HK Army are the big time sponsors here for the PSP. Also, a lot of like to send a, a special shout out to all the advertisers here with Paintball Access. We're trying to take Paintball forward. Please help us by supporting our sponsors. Go to their websites, thank them for their involvement, and most importantly, buy some stuff from them. Do you want to help Paintball? Buy some stuff from the people that advertise with this webcast and also the people that sponsor the PSP. This is the best tournament series in the world. So it looks like we are going to take a look in the pits for Chicago Aftershock here. Timeout called as these teams are trying to figure out best game plan that they can roll here with Shock up a point and Upton 187 crew trying to fight back. We'll be right back after this.
So welcome back here, A.B. Brown Sports Complex in Riverside, California for the 2013 PSP West Coast Open. I'm Matty Marshall alongside Todd Martinez and Chris Lasoy. Let's take a look at the Champions Playoffs and how we got to the final game that's about to go down a little bit, man. Edmonton Impact and Tampa Bay Damage are about to play after this match for the Champions Division win. And how they got here, well, Im Impact played a very close game against Houston Heat. Houston Heat has had a, some close games against some really good teams. They tied against Dynasty in one of the best games I've ever seen uh, yesterday. And then Red Legion losing to Tampa Bay Damage in a very close match. And Kirill Peridney actually blew his ACL out, not today, but yesterday. So Red Legion trying to fight for his, their boy, not able to get the win. But still, Red Legion's looking pretty awesome, man. They've rebuilt their team nicely. But Tampa Bay Damage and Edmonton Impact are going to play for the win here in just a little bit. So let everybody know across your social networks that the best two teams that fought hard and long through this event, this very important fourth event here, in order to play in the final. Right now we're watching the finals in the champ or Challengers division with Upton 187 crew and Aftershock. This would be a huge victory for Chicago Aftershock. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly here. He has an Aftershock interview for us. I'm down here with coach Mikey Bruno. Mike, they are down four bodies. You guys have had this opportunity all day. What kind of game plan and strategy do you have to take advantage? We're just trying to shoot one dude at a time. Um, just trying to stay focused in this game. We had a little mishaps with some paint in our pods. Um, the guys are, you know, we, we're getting it together. We'll be fine. We gave them three points, which really kind of annoys me. But it should have been over right now. So we'll just hopefully we can stay focused and keep it going. All right, we'll see if they can stay focused and keep this lead. Well, they weren't able to get a, a, a shot off the break, but they lose two. So Simmons and Velez coming off. Dan Zaleski stepping up, getting that shot on Velez, Todd. Oh, Dan Zaleski, too, just snuck into Snake, too, and got a shot across the field and just barely nicked that Dorito Tower. Ball bounced off. And all the way up, Carl Markowski. Dan Zaleski chops up Carl Markowski coming out of the corner trying to go to Dorito 1. Conwin in Snake 3. So oh, and there, somebody just got a shot in. It might have been the corner on Brian McKenna. And here comes Zaleski down the highway, and he executes Conwin. Woo, back and forth fight as we, man, we have seen these crazy close games all weekend long here in the PSP. And 187 crew stepping up, man. Nice job by Zaleski getting himself a four pack right there. <laughs> Zaleski has 11 confirmed kills just so far in this game. Still five minutes and 45 seconds to go. It's going to be a tie game 4 4. Zaleski's playing great this year. Hey, Zaleski's legit. Zaleski, that kid is a legit paintball player. For we, sure. You know, he came out last year and everyone was talking about how awesome he was, but I think a little bit more glory went to Max Trailer and, uh, and Nick Laval. But Dan Zaleski has emerged this year. I don't know what he did in the offseason, but let's check this out here on the replay. Look at this. Seize the moment. He's like, you know what? I can run the highway right there. And that's the inside part of the snakes. We call the highway because you just have to giddy up, run down. He runs down that last player for Chicago Aftershock, looking at it from the opposite angle. Zaleski launches. Perfect form. Cuts a little inside so he can get that angle. Beautiful work by Dan Zaleski. Gets himself that four-pack. Well, you know what he did? He watched the, tra the Max trailer on PBAccess.com replays last year. And I'm telling you, he's like, uh-uh, uh no, 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 not today. Well, he, it, and hey, it's, well, you know what's great, though? Hey, if you want greatness, well, yeah, that's what you need. You need guys watch trying to tapes. one, well, uh, watch the tapes, but also trying to one-up each other, you know, because think about it, man. It, that's how it is. When you get out there and you have one of your boys, he's out there stepping up and shooting bodies, well, and if you're good enough, you're like, well, wait a second. All right, hold on a second. He, he just got himself three kills. All right, well, all right, let me, let me get out here. <laughs> let me do my thing. I, I, I need to prove myself right now. But that's how greatness happens. Greatness happens when you get a, a people with the like minds that want to achieve, and they play off each other's moves. And we're starting to see that from 187. We're also starting to see that from Chicago Aftershock as they're getting contributions across the board. Law had eight confirmed kills out there this particular match. Markowski, four. McKenna, two. Velez, two. Uh, three. So both these teams real strong. It's all tied up for a piece here, evenly matched up. Oh, right there, Pike getting shot on the break. Coming out to the snake side, nobody else wide. Oh, there goes the back center and on. The, out of the penalty box, straight to the snake corner. He gets shot as well, so three bodies 
dropping for 187 right away. One body dropping for Chicago Aftershock. Aftershock now in control of the snake. Max Trailer trying to fill across from the Dorito side. Makes it across alive, and he gets into the mini Dorito on the snake side. But looks like Davey Simmons down there crawling across onto 187 side of the field. Max Trailer gets blown up. Just one body left alive in the Dorito corner. For Upton 187, here comes the feeding frenzy of Chicago Aftershock. Yeah, Chicago Aftershock making the most of those early kills. And they still have three players left alive against just Nick Laval. It's Velez McKenna and Simmons for Shock trying to make <laughs> it happen. He actually made that Dorito, actually, which is surprising. Um, but paying the toll for it, like you say, Matty. Uh, great play right there by Chicago Aftershock. Taken the next point five to four. This is what we expect. Well, I'll, hey, Rob Velez just got himself two kills in that last point. Rob Velez, big contributor for Shock. You know, we hear us call names like Markowski because he was such a star a while ago. AJ Lawhead, big time member of that team. Davey Simmons has been all over the field in year in uh, last year, and we, we expect a lot out of him. But when you get this is the, this is what I like to see with Shock. They're starting to get deep. They're, they are definitely starting to get deep. I think every single guy in that squad realizes the contribution that he can bring to every single match. And they, the fight on both these teams is very impressive with just about four minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Shock with a slight lead, five to four. You know, but it's only a slight lead. I mean, there's, yeah, you're right. there's 421 left in this game. And I mean, as we've seen on this weekend, there's plenty of time for any team to come back. I mean, not just a one point deficit, like a three-point deficit. Well, one, mean, one major penalty, and well, that that's curtains. Well, and also, I mean, uh, excessive wasn't able to progress to the next rounds, but they had the most dramatic comeback of the entire tournament. They came back from a six-to-one deficit and won the game. They scored six unanswered points. <laughs> that that's unheard of. That's incredibly rare. I mean, you want to talk about the stats on coming back from a six-one deficit? To be honest. I can't even remember a team ever coming back from a 6-1 deficit. I can. I played Infamous, and we got our butt whooped. <laughs> I mean, we went one point, and that was pretty much the end of that game. I mean, it was... Wait, it but happens. did you come back? No, no. We were on the, on the oh, bad yeah. end. <laughs> you're <laughs> on the, the receiving end. We're on the bad end, end of that. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying. You're on the receiving end of that. Yeah, and, and it's unfortunate. But, I mean, you know what? God bless those guys that have that, you know, heart. Yeah, absolutely. You know, right now... Five four game in favor of Chicago Aftershock. All right, so Todd, I'm put you on the spot right now. You're 187 Cruise coach. What are you going to say to these guys heading out right now to play this next point against Chicago Aftershock down one with four minutes and 20 seconds left to play? Well, on that last breakout, uh, they went standing up high, shooting to that mini Dorito on the snake side. That was the only body that they sent out here. If you're only going to send one body to the side, you've got to dive in hard, make sure you get alive. And they're going to do what they should do right now, which is try and get wide on the snake side and dive in hard to that mini Dorito. So they got some spacing over here, which is what they needed. And they shot, looks like Caleb Abel on the break for Chicago Aftershock. So 187 doing what they need to do, create some space get a kill on the break and now attack the snake. Looks like jumping into snake three, Lazat. Oh, but was, up and gets one right in the face. That was a, that was not a good death for Lazat because he was in a position to try to help tie it up for his team. Now there's no one in the snake for 187 crew. Yeah, but McKenna and Lawhead are both walking off right now for Chicago aftershock. Carl Markowski tries to go into the Dorito too and he gets chopped up. Just a little too high on the attack for Carl Markowski. Got to get in there, get alive. That's going to allow Nick Laval to come on to Aftershock's side of the field. And Did he is just going to destroy Rob Velez in that mini Dorito. This is Sunday paintball right here. Absolutely. Uh, totally, one, Chris. 1 1. Totally. 2 1. 2 yeah. 2. Yep. 3 2. 3 3. Four, 5 it's 4. I mean, 5 5 right now with three minutes left, Maddie. Well, what, what that tells me is that these teams want to win. Nick Laval goes out there, gets himself a three-pack to help tie the game up for his team. So now it's 5-5 with three minutes and eight seconds left to go. And Chris, exactly like you said, this is Sunday Paintball. We'll be right back after this.
Oh, so this just in from the field, a minor penalty on Aftershock for talking towards the end of that point, and that means that they are gonna have to start down a body. So that is gonna put a little wind in the sails for Upton 187 crew, especially because they just scored that last point to tie it up here at five. So with three minutes and eight seconds remaining, the paintball gods have given us some amazing paintball here today and amazing weather, which to be honest is kind of rare. Well, I wouldn't say it's amazing weather. We have, it's heat. You know, there is some heat to deal with, but I'll take this over humidity. I'll take this over rain. I'll take this over cold. It's really not that bad. It really hasn't been as bad as tournaments in past years, you know. Right now, this is pretty awesome. We've been pretty blessed all year with every uh, event we've been to. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly on the sidelines. I can hear like seven. Hey guys, I am down here with Nick Roberts in the pits. It is 3.08 right now, they're tied. Were you guys expecting such a close match? I don't think we were. I mean, we played them in the prelims and we beat them pretty handily 7-2. So, I mean, they were, they're a fast team. They like to get crazy and we were shooting them off the break. They've been doing a really good job of staying in tight, taking the back bunkers, doubling up and shooting us. And uh, we definitely weren't expecting that. So we're adjusting and I think we're doing a good job of shooting them now. And uh, looks like they just got two minors right there. So good looking for us. All right, it's the tide point. We'll see who takes the lead. Well, that definitely helped out at 187 Cruz. Uh, my, talk, what were we talking about before? Minor mistakes, right? Minor mistakes, I believe it was. You know, minor mistakes. They got two minor mistakes thrown in the air. Right there, that last point on the snake side. And that's going to allow Max Trailer to run down the field and put the paint on Brian McKenna. As you see right there, number 10, walking off here. Shock, own worst enemy. Yeah, they, they are too. It's tied. Velez goes out there, gets a minor penalty, which pretty much seals the deal for this particular point. Now, Upton 187 crew, they're one point away from winning this challenger's bracket here. Yeah, you know, I'm telling you, man, it's, like you said, own worst enemy. Uh, but still, it's only 6-5. There's 224 left in this game. The, and Mikey Bruno has something in his head right now, besides crazy people, to go down the field and make his, his game plans are phenomenal. He has had some really I good love game it. plans. I, I really like, I like the fact that these guys are just straight bleeding Aftershock Blue right now. But you got to be careful with that because when you play super intense and you play emotional, well, you're riding on that fine line of disaster because if you let your emotions get the best of you, and you play a little bit too into that gray area, you're gonna get penalties, you're gonna make those little mistakes because you're not thinking clearly, and that has been the problem for Chicago Aftershock. They're great at taking spots, they have awesome game plans, they have tons of heart, and they put the effort required in when they're out there. You can tell these guys really want it, but they some they make these little mistakes. It's it, we For the past two seasons, we keep seeing this, and this is the worst time to do that when it, it, you're so close to that W. You know, you're getting close to winning that tournament, and you get that minor penalty, worst timing ever for this penalty. Now, 187 crew, one point away from this win. Yeah, and with that said, I mean, that was a perfect example of myself when I was playing. Uh, I played by emotion. I'd, I'd, I'd be mad, I'd go out there, I'd do, I'd do things I shouldn't be doing, make bad decisions, and, but, and, but and that, cost my team. But Chris, but, that, it's, but that's your wisdom now, years, years that you've spent in the game and your ability to look back with objectivity and go, yeah, you're right, okay, well, I probably shouldn't have done it that way. But that's because you've been through that. You've been through that trial, and you can look with perspective. And the problem is, is when it, it's this close to you, it's like anytime you're this close to something, you can't see it. You have to look at it from here. And so that's the thing with aftershock. They need to go back and watch tape and see where they made those little mistakes. Be honest with themselves and say, look, we have all of this ability to to do this to do this thing, which that, which is what we do, which is try to win paintball games. Yeah, and it, and it looks like Rob Velez gets a, f a fresh minor because he didn't start in the box like he was supposed to. So again, just little mistakes are just killing Aftershock's chances here of winning this particular tournament in the Challengers division. Now, of course, I have to throw a little uh, footnote to this. To be honest, they're both into the, the Champions division for World Cup, and that's the big thing. Shock's gonna have a couple months now to go back to the drawing board, look at the, their successes, look at their failures, and again, look at it with objectivity. Not look at it with through those emotional goggles where you're super hot and heated and trying to make excuses and explanations for what happened. And you can see there's Mikey Bruno. Blood, blood confetti. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, Mikey Bruno, one of these days, at one of these tournaments, we almost saw his head explode earlier. I swear <laughs> to God, I thought Mikey Bruno's head was going to explode during that Tauntauns game, but... <laughs> He's so passionate. You gotta love that passion. 
You can't teach heart and you can't teach passion. Some people have it and some people don't. Some people just care more. And when you care about things, like stress comes from actually caring about something. So yeah, you want to, like, okay, look at the Russians. They have that Iceman-like ability to just come to each and every one, each and every one of their games with that, you know, just straight objectivity. But, you know, Aftershock's never been like that. I don't want to see that from Aftershock necessarily. But no, I do, it, it, yeah. I, you want to see that passion. It's, it's never going to die. But at the same time, you have to mix you have to mix some logic in with your passion. If you can't mix logic in with passion, you're never going to be successful out here. You know, that's why their jerseys are blue, because they hold their breath so much. <laughs> they turn blue so, on your screen. So, Lauren, you are a little bit closer to the action down there in the pits. Can you give us a glimpse into the mindset of these two teams? What's going on in the pits right now? Hey, Maddie, I was just talking to Markowski about what was happening during that break there. Um, apparently, Shock had no idea that they had a penalty. They thought 187 had a penalty on off the break during that point. They didn't have anyone in the box, and they got guys pulled because of it, but they were arguing that they were not told that they had a penalty. So there's just a lot of confusion down here, and they're arguing over that penalty and who that if, if 187 should have gotten that point. Yeah, well, hey, it, moments are tense right now. This, it, you have to keep your head about you when chaos reigns. When chaos happens, look, try to get as much information as you possibly can. Do what you need to do to, you know, try to make the best decision in that situation. Two minutes and 24 seconds to go here. Aftershock crew, crew one point away from victory. Wow, look at that, man. Dan Zaleski, 15 confirmed kills. Todd, what do you think about that? Dan Zaleski stepping up. Dan Zaleski's murdering yeah, out here murdering right now. murdering people right now. Yeah, Dan Zaleski just murdering people out there. And it's great to see Dan Zaleski have such a great season. Yeah, and you know what? I can't wait to see what we're going to, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with 187 crew when we get to World Cup. Yep. Are they going to carry this? You know, are guys like Zaleski and Laval and Painter going to keep playing? Uh, the way that they need to play to be effective in the champions division. Very, that's you know, a good this, point. This is the second time that they've had to fight yep. out of the challengers division. The last time they were here, they didn't make the most of it, got sent right back down. I'm in the same boat right now with Omaha Vicious. Yep. We are not satisfied with the way that we played this weekend. We are no, we know that we are a better team than the way we performed out here. Because you've shown it before. We've and seen better play out of Vicious. It exists inside you guys, just like more exists out of 187, and they're out here trying to prove it right now. And when you got a guy like Dan Zaleski out there feasting on 15 kills, that's a kid who wants to play at the top level of the game. Absolutely, and uh, you know, their, their intensity is fantastic, you know. Between uh, Aftershock and those guys, I mean, it's just, it's so much fun to watch this game right now. Yeah, I'm having a great time watching this game. We have, we have, there, there's been some close games. This is probably the closest, one of the closest games we've seen out here, all tournament long here. Challengers Division Final. Shock starting to get blown up though, and it's looking like Upton 187 crew is gonna close it out and win this match. Here comes Zaleski again in the 50 snake. Max Trailer gonna run the last player down. Get shot, Darula. 11 seconds on the penalty, but and with a not 40. gonna be enough as Nick Laval, number 13, gonna hang the flag for Upton 187 crew who is gonna take this Challengers division title here at the Riverside Open. Yeah, you can hear the Upton 187 Crew fans starting to chime in from the stands as Upton 187 Crew is going to take this game 7-5 to five over Aftershock, who fought hard. They fought, they, they played some great paintball, man. And But Upton 187 Crew, man, uh, you got to give MVP Dan Zaleski 15 confirmed kills. Next guy even close to that is Nick Laval, captain of the team with 8 trailer contribute everyone contributed Upton, Upton 187 crew playing with some fire right now but Todd like you were saying can they bring that fire to World Cup I mean we got ourselves a, a, a you know it's two months essentially until the next event everyone's gonna have to go back train as hard as they possibly can for World Cup but Upton 187 crew maybe Cinderella story they might have a chance to win World Cup you never know man I, you, you, you never know but if they if they if they get guys like Dan Zaleski and Nick of they're killing it like they are they definitely have a chance. Let's check in on the sidelines with Lauren. Hey guys, I am down here with Max Trailer from 187. Congratulations on that win. How, I mean, what were you guys thinking going into that? Shock was playing really hard. Yeah, I mean, we played a couple uh, 
games against them not too long ago, and it was pretty much a washout, so we were really surprised they came out that strong. But uh, those guys got a lot of heart. We went point for point all match. I think what it came down to is a couple untimely penalties for them, and uh, experience pulled it out. We were able to slow it down and speed it up when we needed to, and we came out the win. It definitely went your way. Um, you are bumping up to the champions bracket for World Cup. You did such a great job here, but what are you going to be working on in the downtime to make sure you have an awesome showing there as well? Uh, it's always tough to go back up and down from challengers to champions. Champions a lot tighter. Everyone gets shot out a lot more off the break. But, uh, you know, I'm really impressed with the way everybody's playing. we got a lot of young rookies out here. And uh, they're all stepping it up and playing smart paintball. And that's definitely what we were lacking in the past uh, tournaments in the champions division. So. What do you think differentiates between the challenger teams and the champion teams? Everyone's tighter. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if you, if you catch people playing stupid, you just in your mind, you're like, man, that's never going to happen in cha champions. So uh, you just have to <laughs> play a lot better. All right. We'll see if they can play smart at World Cup. Congratulations. They got first against Shock.